Good morning, fellow off-gridders. I wanna shoot a video today talking about my solar panels. We all like to shoot videos talking about inverters and charge controllers and batteries because that's just more exciting. But in actuality, this is where the magic happens. This is what generates the power. This is what creates energy to pump into your batteries. And this is what powers everything. So we tend to ignore these and dive right into the more technical fun things. So I wanna to talk to you a little bit today about my solar arrays. And I'm gonna shoot some separate videos depending on which arrays power which systems in the uh, solar compound, if you will. Um, this solar array right here is built with used solar panels from Santan Solar. And I've had really good luck with these used solar panels. You get a really good price on them and they seem to work really well. I think they're about eight years old. Uh, what happens is these giant solar farms out there end up getting government subsidies to put in bigger, more powerful solar panels. And they end up with these used but still good solar panels that you can buy at a discounted rate. Um, these, for example, are 250 watt solar panels. I have tested all of them and uh, the voltage open circuit is good. I get 36 volt open circuit on each one of them. So I've had really good luck with these. Um, my belief is to over panel. When you can buy solar panels for as cheap as I got these, which is with shipping, maybe $60 a panel. The shipping's not cheap because they have to show up on a big truck, but 60 bucks a panel for 250 watt panels you might as well go kind of crazy and over panel. That way, when you get these days like this where you've got plenty of sun coming in, sure, everything's fine. But when you get those cloudy days, having extra solar panels is really gonna help generate some power when you otherwise couldn't. So, so what you see behind me here is what I consider my main array. And even when the house gets built, this array will stay here and it'll charge everything I need to charge inside of what I call the compound, which will be my garage and my storage containers. Once I build the house, I'll move all these other solar panels onto a, a mount that I build over by the house and I'll use all the other ones to power the house. But let me show you what I have here. I built this array, it's like 4,500 watts. It's 18 250 watt solar panels so I've got 18 of them. There's no way that my charge controller could take 18 of these panels just plugged together in series. And if you don't understand series and parallel, um, there's some good videos out there on that. But basically, if you plug something together in series, you increase the voltage each time you plug something in. If you plug something in in parallel, you increase the amperage every time you plug something in. So what I've done here is I've built three different sections with six solar panels in series. And that maxes out my charge controller, which is a grow watt, 3000 watt inverter. It can take 250 volts of solar power. So by putting um, six of these together, I'm, I'm under that limit. And then I'm, what I've done is I've taken six of these series and I've paralleled those together. So I don't end up increasing, increasing that voltage up above where the uh, charge controller can take it. Um, these panels, you can tell they're used and I'll, I'll give you a zoomed in shot on these. So again, here's the first six that are in series. And let me get a close up so you can kind of see, see the panels. Again, you can tell they're used, but um, they're definitely producing some solar energy. So these six are in series. These six are in series. 
and then these six are in series. And then what I've done is I've paralleled these together. That way I'm underneath the voltage and the amperage that my charge controller can accept. On a beautiful sunny winter's day like today, you may be wondering, but I'm getting, oh, I can get 3,500 watts of solar out of these things even during the winter solstice. So let's go around back and check that out. So I live out on the Pawnee grasslands. And one thing that I have learned is that the wind likes to blow out here. So these are concreted in. I've got these posts four feet deep in concrete. And then I've actually put some hurricane ties on, on these two by sixes to hold everything down. Uh, we've had some serious winds and this array has actually held up really well. I did use a combiner box. So this is how you hook the series solar panels together in parallel. And I'm not real thrilled about this combiner box. I bought it, so I'm using it. But when I got it, some of the wires inside of it were unhooked. I had to rewire some of these MC4 connectors because some of the wires had come out. So quality control was not that great. But you can see where my three strings here are going in. And the, we've got the, um, the breakers with the fuses. Here's the main breaker. And then this is a lightning arrestor that I do have run to a ground rod, which is right there. Uh, my next project is to run a wire to each solar panel and ground each solar panel to that same rod. So again, this is my main array. Use solar panels, kept them from going into a landfill, and I'm getting good energy out of them. So this is where the magic happens. Thanks for watching. I'm gonna do two more videos on the other solar panel arrays I have, and then I'll show you how they're hooked up inside of the, the solar compound. But if you like these videos and you wanna come on my journey of building my off-grid energy efficient home, it's much like an earth ship, although I can't use all of the recycled tires and things due to county code. But if you want to join me on this journey, like, subscribe. I would love to have you. Thanks a lot.